level or fundamentals. You're probably here because you have levelers at your shop and perhaps you may need to work on one or maybe you're just curious about what actually goes on underneath the unit when you pull that chain. Well, we're going to look at it from both perspectives. This first episode is about spring-loaded mechanical units, which are the most common type of dock leveler. And eventually, we'll get into hydraulic and air-powered units. First, we're going to talk about safety. Regardless of what type or brand of machine you're working on, there should be a maintenance strut underneath it. They all come with one, and it needs to be in place every time you go under there. It works just like the prop rod that holds up the hood on your car. Even without the springs, the maintenance strut is designed to support the weight of the entire unit. It will also keep a co-worker who doesn't realize you're under there from closing it on you. I guess a hard hat wouldn't be a bad idea either. Alright, here's how it works. There's a large flat surface called the deck and a shorter hinged plate called the lip. That ratcheting sound you hear when you walk it down is from the hold down assembly. It keeps the deck from going up. Pulling the rear chain releases the hold down allowing the main springs to propel the deck upward. When the deck gets high enough it is stopped by a chain or cable anchored to the frame of the machine. The other end of that chain isn't attached to the deck, it's attached to a lever welded to the lip. This is what makes the lip swing outward. At that point, you can let go of the chain and walk it down onto the truck, and the hold down assembly keeps it there. The lip is pretty heavy, so most units have what they call a lip assist spring, which pushes the lip outward. This spring isn't quite strong enough to extend the lip, it just counterbalances some of the weight so the chain doesn't have to pull so hard on the lever to make the lip extend. It's the momentum of the deck traveling upward that makes the lip extend. The lip spring just makes it easier for the cable and lever to do its job. If your lip doesn't extend all the way, you most likely will need to add tension to the main springs and leave the lip spring alone. If you do decide to adjust the lip spring, keep in mind you'll need to take big swings at it to get any noticeable improvement. If the lip spring is too tight, the lip won't want to drop, or it may not drop all the way. If it's too loose, you run the risk of breaking the chain or lever welded to the lip. To slow down the rate at which the lip falls, there is a shock absorber attached to it. This gives the operator time to lower the leveler onto the truck before the lip falls. These shocks come in all different shapes and sizes, but they all work similar to each other. They are very difficult to compress, but they extend easily so as not to interfere with the outswing of the lip. If your lip falls too fast, you may need to replace the shocks. Excessive fluid leakage is a good indicator of worn shocks. You may be able to compensate for this by tightening the lip assist spring, but shocks that only work marginally always end up failing completely. This unit has an adjustable stop to keep the lip position so that it lands evenly in its perches when you stow it. These perches support the leveler and whatever may be parked or driving on top of it at a height even with the floor when not in use. Some machines don't even have these perches and instead rely on cross traffic legs. To accommodate lower trucks, they can be swung out of the way, allowing the deck to descend significantly lower than dock height. For safety reasons, the cross traffic legs cannot be retracted when the leveler is in the stowed position. It has these little stops welded to the frame. An operator has to open the leveler by pulling the release chain at the rear of the deck and then retract the legs by pulling the front chain. Keeping the chain pulled, the operator can now lower the deck below dock height. Security is also a factor here. When the dock door is shut and the lip is resting in its perches, there's no way for burglars to lower the leveler and crawl under the door. 
For units without the perches, the cross traffic legs keep the leveler from going below dock height, and those stops won't allow the legs to be retracted without first raising the leveler. Now on to the hold down assembly, which, because of its complexity, can be the most troublesome part of a mechanical leveler. The stationary end of the hold down attaches to the frame of the leveler with a pin. The moving portion of it attaches to the bottom side of the deck. This long bar with all the teeth on it is called the ratchet bar. The stop block has little springs that keep its mating teeth meshed with the ratchet bar and holds the leveler in position until you release the pull chain. The length of the ratchet bar with all its teeth allow you to set the leveler at a wide range of heights. Inside the hold down is a big compression spring. This gives the hold down a little bit of travel so the teeth don't get stripped when the leveler bounces up and down from forklift traffic. This one here was full of water. That compression spring is retained by a big nut. That nut is just for assembly purposes and shouldn't require adjustment. Most of them have a weld at the end of the threads to keep you from removing the nut and taking the spring to the face. Hopefully, you now have a better understanding of how your dock leveler works. There are so many different configurations of these machines that I would never be able to show them all. But I do plan on producing something to show some of the really funky designs out there. In the meantime, I'm serious about that maintenance strut. It's the only way to safely get that piece of cheese out of the leveler. Fluffy the cat here had to learn that the hard way.